Welcome back to the Path to Happiness and Introduction to the Unification Principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. From our last session, we could understand why Christianity could establish a global culture, but only on the spiritual level, and why it has not been able to unite mind and body, our spiritual ideals with physical reality, and why we still have wars between nations, races, and religions, and a struggle between left and right in terms of governance. It all came from the course of Jesus. But we also have hope. Just as Joshua brought Moses' foundation into substantial reality, God will send the Son of God again. Jesus will call his successor, just as Moses called Joshua. And he will bring Jesus' spiritual foundation into substantial reality, following the same principles of restoration that we have seen in the Bible. Now we're going to extend our study beyond the history recorded in the Bible. To do so, we identify patterns in the Bible and look for evidence of them in the post-biblical history. Academic historians examining the course of human history often find cases where the character of one period in history is repeated during a later period. Some historians, such as Spengler and Toynbee, point out that history progresses in a spiral movement. Through the principle, we can understand the cause of this. When a period of history repeats the events of, a, of a, an earlier period, we refer to these two periods as parallel periods. How do parallel providential periods come about? The parallel periods are formed because human history is God's providence of restoration. As we've learned, the providence of restoration takes people opposite the way of the fall for the purpose of laying the foundation for the Messiah. As we observed in our study of the Bible, if a central figure fails his or her responsibility to restore the foundation for the Messiah, the providential period centering on that person comes to a close. Yet, since God has predestined the absolute and eventual fulfillment of his will, he chooses another person to carry on the same mission. Since this new period restores the previous period, the same providential events will be repeated, appropriate to the later time period. This is how periods come to be parallel to one another. This is the basic historical view of the unification principle. Let's look at some of the rules that are involved here. First, when the providence of restoration is prolonged, it may extend to as many as three stages. Why would the providence of restoration be prolonged? As we learned in the principle of predestination, the predestination of God's will is absolute, but the fulfillment of that absolute will is conditional. God's will is fulfilled only when God's portion of responsibility and the human portion of responsibility are combined. Accordingly, when the central figure of the providence fails to fulfill his or her portion of responsibility, God will prolong the providence. The rule for prolongation is based on God being a being of the number three. All things created in his likeness manifest themselves through a three-stage process in their mode of existence, movement, and growth. Therefore, the providence of restoration may extend to as many as three stages. The failure in Adam's family was prolonged three times in the families of Noah and Abraham. When Abraham made his mistake in the symbolic offering, the dispensation was prolonged through Isaac in the second generation, and it was fulfilled by Jacob in the third generation. 
Moses and Jesus courses, each extended to three courses. Therefore, the entire course to fulfill the providence of restoration has awaited a third providence for its realization and completion through the three stages of Adam, Jesus, and Christ at the second advent. Second, the indemnity conditions over a long expense of time need to be collapsed and restored in one lifetime. The conditions that accumulate in providential history due to the failures to complete our responsibility are called vertical indemnity conditions. The task of the central figures to fulfill all these conditions in a short time is called horizontal restoration through indemnity. For example, Abraham in his offering had to restore horizontally all the vertical indemnity conditions from Adam's family and Noah's family. Jacob had to fulfill a condition to horizontally restore through indemnity the vertical indemnity conditions accumulated through the 12 generations since Noah. For this purpose, he was given 12 sons, from whom descended the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus chose 12 disciples and 70 followers in order to restore, in a short time, the vertical indemnity conditions that had accumulated from Jacob's course, in which God had worked with Jacob's 12 sons and 70 kinsmen, and Moses' course, in which God had worked from the 12, with the 12 tribes of Israel and 70 elders. Third, the horizontal restoration through indemnity also can be carried out vertically. Because Abraham failed in his symbolic offering, the condition was prolonged vertically to three generations, from Isaac to Jacob, covering periods of 120 years, 40 years, 21 years, and another 40 years. Abraham thus restored vertically the horizontal indemnity conditions as if there had been no prolongation. Fourth, there is a time period necessary to restore the foundation of faith. We have to pass through the time period by establishing the four-position foundation and embody certain numbers. A time period of indemnity is needed to restore the number to complete the four-position foundation that was invaded by Satan. And we chart these numbers in history. What are these numbers? First, the number 12 needs to be restored. Some examples are the 120 years it took Noah to build the ark, the 120 years of Moses' leadership, the 120 years of the United Kingdom, and the 120-year period of Charlemagne's original Holy Roman Empire. Second, the number four needs to be restored. Examples include Moses' 40-day fasts, the 40-day mission of the spies in the land of Canaan, Jesus' 40-day fast, and the 40 days of the ministry of the resurrected Jesus. Thirdly, the number 21. It's made up of seven and three multiplied together. The number seven is the sum of the number of heaven, three, and the number of earth, four. The periods of formation stage, growth stage, and completion stage each require the number seven, so we end up with the number 21. Examples include, Noah sent out a dove three times in seven-day intervals, 21. Jacob labored in exile in Haran, enduring three seven-year periods. There was the 210-year period of the Israelites' exile in Babylon and their return to Israel, and a 210-year period from the papal captivity and return to Rome on the eve of the Reformation. Fourth, the number 40. When the number four, 
the number of the four position foundation, is multiplied by the number 10, the number of unity, they form the number 40. So for example, God had Noah endure the 40-day flood judgment. Noah sent a dove 40 days after the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat. Moses' 40-day fast. Israel's wandering for 40 years. The 400 years from Noah to Abraham. The 400-year period of slavery in Egypt. And the 4,000 biblical years from Adam to Jesus. Fifth. The parallel periods relate also to the number of generations. We learn that God chose Noah as the central figure to restore the foundation of faith 10 generations and 1,600 years after Adam. But when the providence of restoration was prolonged due to his second son, Ham's mistake, God called Abraham after 10 generations and 400 years to restore it. Let's examine the numerical significance of the 1,600 years and 10 generations in the period of restoration through indemnity. The growing period has three stages, each of which consists of three substages. When these are completed, we have a total of nine stages. After passing through the nine stages, the creation can enter God's realm of direct dominion and complete the purpose of creation by becoming one with God. The number 10 is called the number of return or number of unity. Therefore, God set up Noah 10 generations after Adam. God could return to the position to establish a new Adam. Adam and Eve were to have passed through a 10-stage course to maturity which fulfilled the number 40 and thereby become perfect embodiments of 40. Each position of the four-position foundation should fulfill that indemnity period to restore the number 40, so we end up with the number 160. Since fallen people were to fulfill this number through 10 generations, they had to complete an indemnity period of 16 hundred years. These numbers are all recorded in the Bible in this way. Likewise, God called Abraham 10 generations and 400 years after Noah. 10 generations had taken 1600 years, but Noah, but God shortened the human lifespan in the Bible, so the total was now 400 years. Based on our review of the Bible, let us now examine the overall viewpoint of the periods in providential history. I would like to explain by referring to the chart on the parallel time periods. The six-stage period from the course of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is called the age of the providence to lay the foundation for restoration. This was the age in which the parallels are of a symbolic nature, and it was the time to build the family foundation for the Messiah. So everything took place on the family level. The second stage is the 2,000 years in six stages from the time Jacob took his 12 sons and 70 kinsmen, the descendants of Abraham, to Egypt. And then the Israelites fled Egypt under the leadership of Moses and entered the land of Canaan until the coming of Jesus. This age is called the providential age of restoration. In this age, the parallels are somewhere between symbolic and substantial, and we call these image parallels. It was the period to establish the national level foundation for the Messiah. Following that is the 2,000 years in six stages centered on Western Christianity since the time of Jesus. This was the time when the faithful Christians awaited Jesus' second coming and were obedient to Jesus' will to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth despite severe persecution. This age is called the age of the 
prolongation of the providence of restoration. This is the age of substantial parallels. It was the time to establish the worldwide foundation for the Messiah. As you see in this chart, God's history of the providence of restoration follows the rule of creation based on the number six, similar to God's six stages or days of the creation of the universe. We can also see the rule of the three stages, which is the completion of the formation, growth, and completion stages. This might seem abstract to us, but let us keep in mind that we're talking about people, men and women like you and me, living their lives in hopes that one day they would see a better world, but having no idea how or when. These are our, our mothers and fathers, going back hundreds of generations. And these principles show how each person's life ties into God's great plan of salvation and how each and every child of God will someday live together as families of true love in heaven. Until now, we have observed the contents of Adam's family, Noah's family, and Abraham's family during the 2,000-year period of laying the foundation for restoration in detail. In the next lecture, I will talk about the age of the providence of restoration and the age of the prolongation of the providence of restoration. Thank you so much for your attention and God bless you.